Hello everyone, welcome to the Hypergamous journey. And I'm looking at a squirrel right outside my window. <laughs> so yeah, welcome to the Hypergamous journey. This is a dating channel for women 55 and older, even though I have younger subscribers and viewers. So if you like um, my, if you're a subscriber, please like, subscribe. I mean, like my channel. Um, I will have over a hundred views, 300, 200 views and like five likes. So it helps to spread the word to other women who could use this information, um, in this age demographic. It's a dark hole between 50 and 80. And, um, they tell us we're all washed up at that age or in between that age. And it's not true. It's just not true. So another journal inspiration. I um this journal is in Spanish. I grew up in New York City and I love the Spanish language even though I can't speak <laughs> Spanish. I can say hello, how are you and that kind of thing, but to have a conversation is a no-no with me. Um it says if you speak Spanish, it says, um, breathe, respira, inhale, inhalare, and exhalar, exhale, relax, relajar, and orar, pray. So breathe, inhale, exhale, relax, pray. And it says the same thing on the back. I was inspired by this journal because I find myself having to do this um, at the time that I thought of this for this particular journal. I found myself having to do this quite a bit. I can't remember the circumstances that caused it, but it probably had something to do with hypergamy. And I had to keep telling myself to breathe, inhale, exhale, relax, and pray. Breathe, inhale, exhale, relax, and pray. And I put it in that order because that's the order that works for me. Breathe. Inhale. Exhale. Relax and pray. Breathe, inhale, exhale. After I do that inhale and exhale, it causes my body to relax a little bit more and start to praying. This is not an easy journey. I'm a woman who has been in her masculine energy for 30 years over 30 years, maybe longer than that because I didn't get the message about being feminine and girly and I didn't get that memo. So I've probably been in my masculine energy all of my life. I think that it's okay to say that. All of my life I've been in my masculine energy. I knew that I liked dresses I knew I wanted to learn about makeup when I was in my 20s, but my mother, she wasn't really a makeup woman. A little lipstick, you know, some blush on the cheek, no foundation, no eyeshadow, no mascara. And what it, and she even got that from me, the little bit. She would like my color. She's like, well, what kind of lipstick is that? And then she would try it on and she would like it. If I had, um, my mother's lighter than me, so she couldn't wear my foundation, but she could wear my um, cheek color. So she would try the blush on and wear that. But I, what I knew about makeup, I had to kind of learn on my own. And then my skin was, you know, when you're young and youthful, you can go, by, go out without a lot of that foundation and this and that that they tell you. And yes, it gives a more polished look, but it also gives a very made up look when you're younger. And plus I exercise and dance too much and was, you know, like I roller skated. I did African dance, modern dance. Roller skate, I said that. Roller skate, African dance, modern dance. What else did I do? I played um, tennis in college. 
I did handball around the block. You know, my neighborhood, we played handball. I was just always doing something and, you know, working up a sweat. So therefore, you know, really getting all dolled up like that on a regular basis was not it for me. But this, that, and you know, I just did this in Spanish. I have an English version one. And so I um, outlined the woman's face in um, brown. And I, I will do a, a video for my inspiration for that later. And it may be the same inspiration. But um, I love Spanish. I don't speak it. I know very little. But I grew up in Harlem around people who were Puerto Rican. And I learned that we are all the same. You know, we, like my friends, and she was one of my best friends, I think. At the time we were in, um, they call it middle school. We call it junior high in New York, but middle school in the South. We were in middle school and I met her when I was in the seventh grade. We lived in the same neighborhood. And I don't know how we became friends, probably me walking up to her because she was very shy. Um, she's from, um, like I said, Puerto Rican. She was very shy. So I probably walked up to her and started talking. And then we discovered we lived in the same neighborhood and knew some of the same people. And to my knowledge, I was her only black friend and she was my only Puerto Rican friend. And so she you know, introduced me to her tribe who were also Puerto Rican. And I know there's a color thing in Puerto Rico, just like there is in America in intra, you know, colorism, intra colorism, just like in the black community. So these people were white Puerto Ricans and, you know, me, black, black. And, um, yeah, so they were all white Puerto Rican, but they were so welcoming to me to me and, and and when she introduced me to her mom who didn't speak any English, she introduced me to her mom. Her mom welcomes me with open arms, even though I didn't understand her and she didn't understand me. I mean, she understood English, but she didn't speak English. And so someone she didn't understand, um, my friend would translate and she, you know, offered me you know, to stay for dinner. And, you know, that's a big thing when a, when a, a, a family and the mother and father don't know you and on the first try, you know, introduction, they invite you for dinner. <laughs> that's a big thing. I don't care what culture you're in. And so um, I didn't stay because my mother was very strict. So I had to hightail it home. So I didn't stay. But um, I will never forget her mother and I remember her last name even to this day. And so um, it brings tears to my eyes because they were just very warm to me. And um, and she and I remained friends for years while we went to elementary, I mean, junior, um, what do they call it? Middle school, we call it junior high. And then she moved away when she went to high school. She moved away and I lost touch with her. And so, um, I just gained an appreciation for, um, I have to say Puerto Rican culture because it's, to say Spanish culture is too large. Spain is Spain, Puerto Rico is Puerto Rico. They are all different. Just like you can't say black Americans and include them with the continent of Africa because most of us don't even know where we come from. Exactly. Even though we got Ancestry.com and Genealogy.com and all these other things, we cannot pinpoint what tribe we come from, what country we come from, or any of that, to my knowledge. So that is the inspiration for, you know, this breathe, inhale, exhale, relax, and pray um, statement journal. It's a um, tribute to my Puerto Rican friends who just embraced me and loved me for myself and I love them. 
Yeah. So, you know, that was a little touching, a little teary eyed for me because um, I wish, I hope that um, my friend is, uh, is well and that she has a, um, I want to say hypergamous life, but that she's happy. That's the main thing that she's happy with um, children and grandchildren and, and um, maybe she's still married. And um, yeah, I think she is because she was raised that way, you know, to want marriage, to want children, to want a, to create her own family. So I'm sure that she is uh, married or did marry and has a couple of children. And now probably she's a grandmother. So I miss her. I will just say her initials, um, E.T., E.T., I miss you, and yeah, so that's all I'm going to say because I'm going to start crying. So anyway, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.